Hi, I'm Denise and this video I'm going to be talking about the making of this painting and showing you bits and pieces as I'm painting um, various parts and I'm not sure what's happening. I, I do share some thoughts about it um, during the video and I don't think she's reached a place where I'm satisfied to leave her at but I think I'm going to put it into this video now and then maybe in future weeks uh, I'll pop a new picture in if she's changed or some parts of it have changed. It's sort of a case of when I focus too much just on one painting it, I can just keep repainting it a dozen times and I'm trying to not do that as much as I used to and give myself some grace to let it rest and move on to something else and circle back around to it when I feel, you know, the urge to. And so that's what's happening with her. Um, she's been through various stages already and here she is resting now at, at this stage. And um, yeah, I hope it's helpful. I'm sharing the process and some of my thoughts behind it and yeah I hope that's helpful. I know I enjoy watching and hearing videos like that, um, seeing a bit of how people paint but also hearing their thoughts behind it I find really um, helpful. So especially when you're spending a lot of time on your own painting and so to hear you're not crazy, other artists think are along the lines of you quite similarly um, is comforting and so um, that's my hope that these videos can offer that kind of support and comfort I guess on your journey so hope you enjoy it see ya I painted this painting oh it could be 10 years ago now and it's just been hanging around I liked it for quite a while um, there were lots of pieces about it I liked the chicken, the little cup earrings, the, I don't know, it was sort of a floaty, free-feeling kind of painting. I guess it was loosening up a little from where I was before. It was inspired by Charlotte Sophia when I was doing Colour of Woman teacher training. So, um, yeah, I'm deciding to paint over it now. And see what new comes along. So I'm just sitting here with these. This painting has already sold and will be leaving. I'm not sure when, but quite soon. And so I just wanted to sit with her for a bit longer. And also that one there has sold. So I've just got a photo of that. And I'm just, I was just remembering some things that I loved and particularly that teapot using a bit of collage. So I have rummaged through my collage pieces and just found this little piece of paper and made another teapot and cup. Now the thing I loved a lot about that one was it was a little more random so I've been a bit more thoughtful and I found the image and making it a teapot on purpose but now that's causing me to invite in, invite myself to use this as a bouncing off for the whole theme of this painting and because I had these colors already going and then I went looking for the collage you know it's fitting in quite beautifully it's almost the identical pink and, and it's showing me some other colors that I wouldn't normally think of the deep purple and that bronze and I quite love bronze um, metallic which it's got in the background so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have this um, collage piece sort of show me what else to put in this painting. And I'm just wanting to draw attention to how important it feels at the moment to make more paintings like these so that I keep learning by doing but another iteration of it and not feeling like I've got to start from scratch all the time because I think that can be quite draining if you think you've got to start from the from absolute scratch every time instead sorry I'm holding this in my hand and it's a bit wavering 
so you know we're invited to use the other paintings that we've done as jumping off points and it's okay to redo and redo and redo because they'll all come out differently so that's what I'm interested in with these ones at the moment and this one's a little bit bigger as well so that's fun and painting over paintings that I'm I'm finished with they they don't um, they don't meet me where I am now and they didn't sell so off they go and to have a new life now which is good because then you don't feel like you're wasting materials of canvases and boards that are lying around it's nice to find um, new life for them So I've been working on this on and off all day, um, you know, not for hours and hours, but like this has been the focus of the day and I'm, I can feel myself getting tired and I'm not clear on what I want to do next in the painting. So I thought I would have a chat with you about what I feel is working and what I feel is not. So my idea at the beginning was um, getting inspiration from that collage pieces of the teapot and cup and now as I've popped them in just with a bit of blue tack they don't seem to be working with what I've got going on much at all except that they could be seen as very different so we're always looking for differences because that's interesting to our eye and I'm enjoying the looseness of the flowers I've definitely been inspired by the flowers that I had on the painting called Maud. Over there, there's her flowers and these flowers. So I'm very, um, I remember loving um, those ones very, very much. So recreating them just makes sense to me. Like if you love something, do it again sort of thing. And what I've just done, um, it was looking, I'm, I'm kind of aware of cool and warm colours and it was looking a bit garish and bright in the background and I'm still deciding what color I will do the background but I have quite a fascination with a green wall so um, and I've picked out the leaves you know the Matisse like leaves I've got them going on again because I just love them so much and I've got plants down in my house that are reminiscent of those so it doesn't feel like it's too much of a stretch for me to put those in my paintings um, and it's and you know teapots and tea are very me as well and so you can see or I can see looking at the lady on the chase now how flat it, I've made it, how it looks so flat now that I have done sort of the same color all the way down her sort of dress nighty whatever that is um, I quite like the lines that you know that very feminine sort of shapes I quite like those but I can see that I've completely flattened the whole thing and what I've sort of done is glazed all the background that was sort of a lolly fallow green I have glazed it with the violet violet with a little bit of quinacridone yellow gold Nicolazo gold 
so that's deepened that a little bit and then I decided to just sort of glaze everywhere with that sort of lilac thinking back to this collage trying to bring those colors into the painting a bit more obviously um, so this is not how it will end up being in the finished state but what I really quite enjoyed and noticed when I was doing the glazing with the lilac or uh, the violet it kind of gave me outlines of the robe without me drawing the outlines because I actually do love outlines and it's quite funny because when you hear formal art classes and stuff they'll always say no outlining no black you know they have all these rules and I particularly love outlining it doesn't bother me I I enjoy the aspect that feels like drawing and drawing in the painting and I think that's what one of the things I enjoy that Matisse has in his paintings so I feel like if Matisse can get away with it we should be able to as well um, rules or not and so yeah this is where I think I might leave it for the night she can have a rest I can have a rest and what I'm tempted and wondering about doing is actually coming in and starting another one or two or I've got eight boards that um, that are waiting to start rather than having this crazy focus on just one painting because I know that it will just get tighter and tighter and tighter if I do that so that's what I thought I'd share with you at, at this point where I'm at decided to put this painting up on my um, painting wall with these others whilst I still have them with me and have a conversation with them with you as to what I'm feeling is happening excuse me just adjusting this um, what I'm observing So when I came back and have a, had a look at this painting here, this, this, um, this new one that I've done this week, and I'm looking carefully as to what, what do I love, what seems to be working and things like that. Um, one of the thought patterns that crossed my mind was, I sometimes look at these and think, who are you? And why am I painting like this? Because sometimes in my mind's eye, I imagine painting, um, I don't know, in a, oh, 
in a more modern way or something. I think what I'm trying to say is I really enjoy this high contrast, black and white, striking kind of pattern. This is sort of almost a different personality is showing up here than what I'm really comfortable identifying with. So I just find that sort of intriguing is to, um, you know, when you go through periods in your life where you're taking stock and wondering who, who, who you are or who, who do you, or who are you aspiring to be at the moment or, you know, things like that. And so when I look at this painting, it really depends on the mood and frame of mind that I bring with me into the studio as to how I feel about it. Um, even from yesterday to today, my feelings are somewhat different. Um, I wonder what I'm trying to say. Uh, I guess sometimes there's more to is this working or isn't it? Is to how much is it resonating with you or me? Um, and so maybe I can look at it in this moment from a sort of a critical view and then also maybe look at it as to what I feel is working or what is it that's bugging me or bothering me about it? And I think one of the things is these muted sort of tones that I feel like I've gotten going. And that's interesting to, as I re recall, the, I'll pause this for a moment. I took a, a bit of time yesterday to um, sort of color swatch the things that I've got on the, um, on the palette and around me is these are the colors that have gone into that painting. And so they're, you know, like there's sort of dirtier pinks here, not crisp and clear that I may prefer. Um, so what I've done is I've had a pink and purple, but I haven't had a red, you know, so I didn't start out with the primaries. So that's interesting to note. No wonder I haven't come up with sort of maybe clearer um, colors except like the teal is very clear and beautiful on its own I um, so yeah no wonder there wouldn't be um, sort of bright bright colors if you don't start off with bright bright primaries you know it does it does just doesn't happen so that's curious that's a p one piece of it and so then I um, and also I started off with the these pieces of collage and that is where I got the color palette from. And so now, all right, I've taken that journey with that color palette, thanks very much. Now, where have I ended up? I've ended up here. And the reason I did, I, I had a pink um, kind of dress or uh, gown on, and then I decided to do the stripy couch. Stripes can really help give kind of shape and movement and context to the shape you really want to show off. So instead of just being a blob, you know, it gave me that feeling that this is a chase lounge kind of big thing. Actually, it reminds me of an old fashioned mattress as I'm looking at it now. So that's not the look I was going for is a slumped folded mattress. <laughs> oh God, shouldn't plant that in your mind. But anyway, that that's coming to mind here. And then this sort of bolster cushion was to try and give a little more shape to what's happening and her, the idea of her reclining. And then the pattern on the dress, I've kind of been inspired by the, the florals on the teapot to sort of bring in, um, yeah, I don't know, kind of continuing the motifs, but in a different size and stuff like that. But when I look at that, um, the mo that sort of florally pattern on that dress, I don't love it. So that's annoying me. And then I got up in the middle of the night the other night and um, I was looking at the green robe and that was annoying me. So originally the, gr the green robe was far more sort of 
not tie-dye but more softer and um, uh, softer more transparent sort of not transparent but it was softer lighter tones and so it felt like it was a bit wishy-washy and it felt like it was too similar in the exact same color and ways as I've got the big leaves so I felt like I needed to deepen the color of the robe so I've done it a little bit without it being really really strong dark and then in the middle of the night I came uh, in and I smoothed um, matte medium over all the pieces that I'd done neo color crayons with to seal them and before doing that so in the middle of the night I had a pink crayon and I was doing that um, pattern on her robe I decided instead of doing stripes I would do this sort of organic um, loose kind of scribbly pattern but then when I've gone and put the matte medium over it to seal it all I feel like it's kind of smudged smudged it a little bit and it's probably smudged these a tiny bit um, and so then I think I've come back in with a bit of um, light magenta paint and so this is the dilemma I find I'm in now is I don't know if I love what I've got going on here as far as the colors um, they they feel a bit muted and um, maybe mid-tone maybe there's a lot of mid-tone in a way you know there's very dark which is coming up on the the purple on the, the teapot I've decided to use a bit of paint and paint over some of the collage I kind of got the feeling I don't want it just to be just cut out paper and stuck on I I like it when it you integrate it a little bit more and I don't know that I've been fully successful with that yet um, I had a sort of a dark umber in the background because I kind of wanted the feeling of giving this more depth to take the plants behind her back a bit and bring her forward a bit so I've been kind of being aware of where's cool colors warm colors warm colors are supposed to come forward cool colors are supposed to go back I've heard that that's not as apparent in acrylic painting as it is in oils so I'm curious about that playing with that wondering about that I had just a dark area over in the corner and I didn't continue this kind of floor but I decided to bring it over there so that it's not automatically pushed into a corner but it was almost like kind of an outdoor indoor garden room where the plants are kind of all around you know could feel like indoor outdoor type thing um, but yeah I, and so what I'm feeling would be wise for me to do at the moment is to hold on to this painting perhaps leave it as it is at the moment and and work on some others because when you have a group of them you can start to really look at them in different ways and and see more of the story I suppose and they each have their own personality and story and color way but um, yeah I'm I'm a little bit perplexed as to where I want to take this one next and so that's why I'm saying sometimes rather than keeping on going over and over and over make some new ones and then I'll come back and visit them as a group so this one here has sold so it will be going soon and so that's why I felt the urgency in a way to have her be with me as I created this one this one was very much informed by this one um, so that's why they're so similar because I'm going to lose her in a way um, and so this one came in 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 sort of in similarity so yeah I'm curious as to do you go through this in your work do you wonder about where do they come from and how you do they feel and what are you craving more of in your painting that you're noticing only arrives sometimes and what what does it take for the painting to be more you I want this that's a 
kind of constant question. So yeah, that's where I'm at with this one. And um, I'll see how much footage I've got, whether it's enough to share um, in a vlog already and, and make something new next week. If you're still here, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you like and subscribe, um, that helps grow the little grow the little channel and um, I'll see you next time. Bye. So it's nice to see the numbers growing a little bit and um, it's just... Yeah, I don't know what, how to explain the numbers thing. I'm trying to be very unreliant on them. But I notice when new followers join along, it does feel lovely. It feels like, oh, okay, somebody watched it. It's okay. You know, 